Welcome to the Michigan Skier Show with our host, Jim Neff. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Welcome to this edition of the Michigan Skier. I'm your host, Jim Neff. We're here at Crystal Mountain for this edition, a very special location at Ken Lock and Lodge here at Crystal Mountain. With us are Chris and Jim McGinnis, owners of the resort, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Crystal and how it came about and where Crystal's going now. Chris, in the early days in 1955, Crystal Mountain really wasn't in existence yet. It was just a dream of a bunch of local citizens uh, to open a place called Buck Hill. That's right, Jim. And I'm proud to say as a little kid, I was here. I absolutely loved it. It was the Buck Hill Ski Club. And it was a group, again, of community, um, really community citizens that just loved ski, loved winter and wanted to share it with their friends and most importantly with their families. I'm very proud to say that my parents, George and Althea Petrits, were part of the Buck Hill Ski Club. In fact, my mom was really kind of one of the major fundraisers. I believe she was the secretary of the Buck Hill Ski Club, but her most important role was she went about the community and she solicited donations and she was actually so persistent in terms of soliciting donations, that some people would just say, just give Althea what she wants so she'll go away. But that is how Buck Hills came about. And I believe it opened, I believe, in 1957. Does that sound right? Um, and it was just two rope toes um, and I believe three slopes. And we had so much fun. It operated on, um, it operated on the weekends when we had snow. And then it operated on Wednesday night. And I don't know, I, I'm sure there was, actually there was, Buzz Olson was the electrician, which was part of the reason we had lights. But we would come out here and ski on Wednesday nights, and my brothers and I, particularly my brother who's a year younger than me, George, we just had a blast. We never wanted to go home. So that was our, that was our early winter, um, or our, our early experiences with skiing, um, and we loved winter for it. The only bad thing that ever happened in winter is if we didn't have enough snow. Of course then, and Jim, you can remember that those times as well, we totally relied on natural snow. And one of the things that we had to do is before we would open this, actually just the rope toes, before we turn them on, we would all pack up. That means we'd have our skis on it, and that was the grooming process. Uh, and actually we got a lot of good exercise and it kept us warm. But that's a little bit about the early days. After those early days, I think it was about 1960, that Crystal Mountain was actually taken over by a group of shareholders who renamed the resort Crystal Mountain and started to put the resort on the map. Now, Chris, in those early years, what did they add, first of all, to try to make this more of a resort atmosphere rather than a community ski club? Again, now you're talking about an early teen, and this was about the coolest thing in the whole world because our hill, Buck Hills, now became a mountain. In one fell swoop, it became a mountain. And several exciting things happened. Number one, we got a chairlift. And many, many of your viewers probably remember the old Main Street chair, which was the longest chair over flat land, probably in the country. And it took forever to get up. But um, it was exciting to have a chair. What else happened, of course, is the lodge, the original lodge, which is still there today and actually where Jim and I have offices and there are lots of other things that happen in that lodge as well. But that lodge was built and with that lodge came another exciting thing for me, but not so exciting for my parents and some of the other parents, and that was a liquor license. Because now, of course, we weren't even teenagers and we were close to being teenagers. But we did want to be in the bar, and the last thing that my parents really wanted us to be doing was to be up in the bar. So there were all sorts of rules about when we could be in the bar and when we couldn't be in the bar, but that was very exciting. The third thing that came, and now that I'm recalling, that came with Crystal Mountain were real ski instructors. And actually, Al Bone um, came from Boyne, and he was a fine Canadian, fine, fine, fine skier. And also Ernst Hohenegg, uh, who came from Erval in Austria. And we really now began to learn how to become quite good skiers. And again, my brother and I, we couldn't, 
we wouldn't let these guys and several other good skiers, including Bernie Fleetwood, who still lives in Traverse City, we wouldn't let them out of our sights. And, and also the Van Dusens were very much involved in, um, actually the Van Dusens were very much involved with Buck Hills, but then Keith was the first general manager. But my brother and I just, we were always behind them. We were their shadows. And, and that's, that's really how we learned to ski. Um, and so it was pretty exciting. Well, they had the ski operation down pat. Uh, summer business tended to be a little bit of a problem. And I think it was summer business that really caused the investors to maybe look for someone to buy the resort. My family got involved in 1966. It wasn't exactly their goal to get involved um, at this point in a ski resort, but in any event, it happened. Um, and initially, my father was involved with um, two other investors um, and really had no interest in, again, being involved in the day-to-day -day management of the operation. I believe it was it was the early 70s, it was probably 72 or 73, when he really couldn't afford to lose any more money and he finally figured out that he better manage it himself as are many, many successful ski areas are owner-operated. So my father became involved in day-to-day -day operations as general manager. I, as I say, I think it was 72, it could have been 73. And as he says, it was the last thing in the world that he ever really wanted to do. And that first year was horrible because everything was breaking. I mean, sewer pumps were breaking and all sorts of lines were breaking. And it wasn't the strongest staff in the world, so it was a great challenge. But over time, my father grew to absolutely love operating the resort.